Hey everyone, this is the part three of my video on Oka Mayor Libby Schaaf's run for re-election and why I support her run for re-election but with some enormous reservations and I focused in on economic development and how she handles, or hasn't really handled economic development and using how she's worked with our sports teams as an example. Now, I state again, this has nothing to do with the use of tax dollars. This is all about approach, style, and the employment of, or lack thereof, of people in Oakland and the Bay Area who understand the issues much better than she does. Now, where I left off in the previous video, I talked about how Mayor Schaff and her staff had never followed up with me when I got Piper Jaffrey Investment Bankers, one of the best sports financing companies in the country, if not the world, to be interested in the Raiders issue and want to work on the Raiders issue in 2015 never did. And Mark Davis, the old Raider, Oakland Raiders owner, asked me to come up with a plan. My plan consisted of two hotel rooms, hotel rooms, excuse me, hotel wings, that had 1,000 rooms total, 1,010. And San Francisco's hotel council president says that we have an enormous shortage of hotel rooms in the Bay Area. HBC Consulting computed that to be 16,000 rooms. Another person, actually the former head of the Oakland Convention and Visitors Bureau, what we now call Visit Oakland, said that in Oakland alone we had a thousand room, ho room hotel shortage. A thousand hotel room shortage, excuse me. So with all that, with all that evidence that we need more hotel rooms, here comes Pat Cashman, who's on Mayor Schaaf's internal staff, longtime employee of the County of Alameda, friend of mine, but I don't agree with him in all cases. Great guy, but this is business. I don't agree with him on this business issue. Said that my plan for hotel rooms was a wash, it was a crock. And then Mayor Schaaf said, well, why do we need hotel rooms at the Coliseum when I can walk to a hotel room on Hagenberger from the Coliseum? That's a mile and a half, it's dark and it's dangerous, folks. You don't want to do that. As opposed to walking to a hotel room that's basically part of the south end zone in the Coliseum. I had to explain that. It was one of those made-up arguments which caused me to think, what's Libby up to? That she would actually throw out such a ridiculous p thought. Because it was. When the president of the San Francisco Hotel Council looked at my plan and said, that'll work. Simple. And he is in the hotel business, okay? The idea for the hotels wasn't just to have hotels. It was to solve a problem that was presented to me when Mark Davis asked me to come up with a plan. The, 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 the problem is, how do you privately finance a sports facility so large that it costs a billion for the Raiders and and do it in a way that, uh, that has enough cash throw off for the team itself to more than survive, but to thrive as an organization. It's easier said than done. And so a friend of mine said, well, what you have to do is, because I'd forgotten, I'd like, yeah, forget your basics as any, did you forget your basics? It's tenants. I thought, oh yeah, of course, tenants. What's the right tenant to be involved, or the right set of them to be involved in the land use plan for such a facility and hotels was a natural answer and so I came up with this idea that was in part based on what was being done in Cleveland with the downtown convention center and hotel so the financing plan I have is not pie in the sky it's very real very real made a great spreadsheet worked like a charm squeezed out two billion dollars for the Raiders all privately financed call for an industrial development serial bond system all privately financed. He even laid out how the legal structure would work. All privately financed. Civic involvement, sure. But no subsidy. Not anything like what Fortress was doing. No. To be blunt, much better. Much better. Libby never gave it the time of day. Never sat down to bless it. Just let Pat say in a room, I didn't know what I was talking about, when Pat Cashman, when the Representatives who did basically said that Pat was full of it, 
And I told Pat that later, I think a few weeks ago. The idea of a task force is to have people who are experts on it able to address different ideas as they come in and different solutions and strategies. We didn't have that. And that's Libby's fault. The problem continued and it built until it reached its zenith moment. And that was when Mayor Schaaf made it her presentation to the NFL owners this year in Boca Raton, Florida. And it didn't go well because Mayor Schaaf was not ready for the technical questions that were going to be aimed at her. It was an entirely different situation than the first one where she did kindly meet with me and I gave her advice with the idea that they were really going to ask her questions around stadium development. She got off scot-free and said, instead at that time, this was November 13th, of, 13th excuse me, November 11th, excuse me, of, 2000, of 2015, in November 11, 2015, Mayor Schaaf was asked to give a sort of a market presentation, not a stadium development presentation. This was a stadium development presentation slash discussion, and she was not ready for it. And the owner said to a person whose name I will not mention that we were better off not having her lead the presentation. And if you think about it, in the history of these talks with NFL owners, no mayor has ever led the discussion. It's been the head of the task force and that person's deputies. It doesn't matter how it came out. The bottom line is that's how you did it. We didn't do it that way. It had to be Libby taking the face. It had to be Libby making the statements. Mayor Schaaf does not know when to take a back seat and let a deputy head things, except in the case of police. In case of economic development, no, it's always got to be her. And then she doesn't understand the nuts and bolts to know how to evaluate how the program is doing and who should be involved. There's no task force for economic development. All of this at a time, we have people in Oakland who aren't with a tech background, trying to figure out how to make ends meet, dealing with high rent and growing, and in the worst cases, living in tents now off the, off, not far from, excuse me, Fruitvale BART station in that long strip of grass that's just below the BART tracks. It's a shanty town, a shanty town. And yet we have these tools of redevelopment we can use to help them and help businesses, help small business owners, and we don't use them. That is not the soul of Oakland. And yet Libby allows this condition, the state of affairs, to go on without abatement. That's not the Oakland I know. That's not even the Libby I know. This Libby is different. The Oakland Promise is a great idea, trying to make sure that kids get a college education. But the problem is, and I'm being very blunt here, the kids that... Oakland Promise is focused on, focused on, okay, are the children of parents who also need help. You're going to help the kids with the help of Salesforce CEO Mark Benioff, but you pay no attention to the adults in the family. It's like giving this underlying message that, you know, we can't really save the adults, we can save the kids. What kind of message is that? It's not save, it's invest in. You're going to invest in adults. Because if you believe the kids of the adults are good enough to be invested in, you've got to believe in their parents, too. You have to give their parents hope. You have to give their parents the idea that you're behind them. Perhaps they have small businesses that they need to uh, have assistance with. Perhaps they need hope, help maintaining their home. Perhaps they need to direct or be, or, or understand that their organizations, companies, private companies in Oakland that will hire Oakland first. Ah, hire Oakland first. That's a mantra I haven't heard in a long time. Whatever happened to that? Hire Oakland first basically died 
when we, a number of politicians, and I say we because I'm part of Oakland, but we as a collective went on this terror of drawing in tech firms and saying, I want biotech, and we forgot to ask the question or didn't want to ask the question, are those firms able to employ our current population? The answer more often than not was, and still to a degree is, no. So what do you have? You have people coming in from other parts of the Bay Area or the country taking those gut jobs, and some of them don't live in Oakland. So how does that help Oakland, let alone solve those so-called jobs housing balance? I'll tell you folks, it doesn't. Okay. So we have forgotten how to do economic development in this town. And that problem, which really started with, with Oakland Mayor Lon Delms, continued with Oakland Mayor Jean Kwan, has been exacerbated by Oakland Mayor Libby Schaff by her inaction, just as the winds of economic change have been blowing through Oakland in many of its most valued residents, including artists, out of it. We've got to stop that. And if Mayor Schaff really cares about Oakland, the soul of Oakland, she'll change her platform. But I will tell you, I'm going to hammer home the message that I'm sending to you, to, to you in more detail in the coming days and months. Stay tuned.